before we get into this video, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hope you're having a wonderful time and a big thank you to everyone that's subscribing to my channel. Without you, this channel would not exist. I need subscribers, same as any other YouTuber. Like I say, without subscribers, this channel wouldn't be here no more. So a big thank you for everyone subscribing and a big thank you to everyone that actually watches my videos, even if you're not subscribing. And if you are one of those people that are watching my channel without subscribing, please do. I need all the help I can get. Hopefully we'll have even a better year next year than we had this year. It's 2021 at the moment. So hopefully it just keeps on getting better because I'm looking to pack up my full-time job and doing YouTube on a full-time basis. Yeah, I have another job. Without that job, I wouldn't be able to do this because it wouldn't pay any bills. So big thank you very much for everyone that's been watching my channel and even bigger thank you for all those who are actually subscribing. Thank you very much for watching. So with that, a quick message from our sponsor and then we'll get on with the video. I have teamed up with Sahara Gaming to give you £20 discount on their all-in-one water cooling system. There is a code in the video description below and a link so that you can go straight to their website, use that code and you will save yourself 20 smackaroonies. Yes, I am actually using their all-in-one wall cooling system on my 5950X AMD Ryzen and I've had no issues with it whatsoever. It works perfectly. It's not expensive and you get 20 pound off. So with that, let's get on with the video, shall we? This is the Western Digital Elements and I've already done an unboxing and I'll stick a link in the video description in case you want to go and check that out. Yeah, 16 terabytes, normally about £400. I bought it on Black Friday or my wife bought it for me for Christmas. Thank you, babe. Yeah, she bought me this and we got it for about £240 that time. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to do something called chucking. Basically, I'm going to break this open, remove the hard drive, and put it in my NAS drive, and hopefully it should work. I've done no research on whether or not the 16 terabyte hard drive or the internal hard drive will actually work in my NAS. I'm pretty sure it will, but how well it will work, I don't know. Like I said, I've done no research on it. This is 16 terabytes. And I'm advising anyone that's going to be watching this video, if you want to do what I'm about to do, you do so at your own risk. You may invalidate your warranty. If you break it, you probably will, actually. <laughs> you know, and they will say, oh, sorry, but you should have, shouldn't take it out of the case. The other thing is, make sure you test it before you break it open. I've already tested it. I know it works. So uh, with that, Let's break her open, shall we? So you're gonna need a few tools. I've got a couple of scrapers and a screwdriver. And yeah, you will need a couple of tools like this. It doesn't matter which side you go for first, but basically you need to break open the clips. <laughs> Wish me luck. Yeah, so this is going in my NES drive. You can put it inside a computer, but should you put it inside a computer, there's something you need to know first, and that is some of the connections need to be covered over because it will not get recognised by your computer otherwise. I'm trying to figure out how to get in there best. Give me a second. I haven't done this for a while. 16 terabytes. What am I doing? It's pretty scary. Right, you need to just get a bit of a gap in there somewhere. I'll get my screwdriver on it first to pry it open. There you go, that's better. There we go, we're in. Now get the screwdriver in first. Then you can get this baby in, take the screwdriver out of the way, and then work your way round. Yeah? yeah? Like so. I know, I know it's scary, but, you know, if you want to save yourself some money, on a hard drive, this is the best way to do it if you want to use an internal because it's cheaper 
then buy an, an internal. And I don't know if this is a red or what they call a white paper one, but hopefully, hopefully it will do everything it's supposed to do. So that one, that side's done. I'm gonna keep that side open for now by sticking that in there like that. Just hold it in place and then go for this again. Here we go, we're in. Like I say, if you're gonna do this, you do so at your own risk. Come on, quite scared actually. Oh, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. I did have another scraper, a plastic one, but I can't find it. Got so much stuff in this room now, it's getting ridiculous. Don't forget, if you're watching this and you like my content, please subscribe. And a Merry Christmas. I think we're there, actually. Now that, hopefully, should just pull out. Hopefully, he says. So get hold of that. There you go. Gotcha. Here she comes. Done it. We're there. Do, 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 16 terabytes. So keep hold of that in case you need to put it back together. So we broke off a couple of clips. They look plastic clips. So that's that out of the way. This is just a little light to say it's working. You know when the hard drive is being red and you, get, you see a little light flashing? That is that. And that should just pull out like so. So now I need to find out how to take that apart. Normally you just push it through. Just gonna be a bit careful. I'll like say it's 16 terabytes. Oh, we need to undo that screw. Now I need a Phillips. Yeah, I need a Phillips. Give me a second. Phillips. Right, this is the actual controller. So you need to remove that and it should just come apart there. There might be another one somewhere, I'm trying to think. It moves that way, but it moves that way. These like little, little rubber mounts or little shock absorbers. There it goes, she's going. See that one out, not coming out that side. Ah, oh, there you go. Du, du, du. There, I knew there's another one there somewhere. Like I say, I haven't done this for a while. Perhaps I should have watched one of my videos. Get that off. There you go. Job done. We're there. Get all that out of the way. Right, so that is it. Or basically. Now then, should you wish to try and put it in a PC, see these, these little copper connections here. These first three here, not from this side, but from this side, you need to cover them over. I believe you only have to cover the three over. And it should work inside your PC. Or your PC should recognise it as an internal hard drive. Yeah, does that make sense? But, if you're putting it in your NAS drive, like I'm going to be doing, your NAS drive works a bit different. It should just work. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to shut down my NAS drive and swap her over, or take one of my drives out and put this little baby in now. And hopefully... <laughs> I know I keep saying this. Hopefully it should just work. So that is 16 terabytes. 16 terabytes of storage. Yeah, that little baby there. Now I'm hoping that's a red. I'm pretty sure it probably is. Because I'm pretty sure, if I can remember right, DGZ. And you can Google it. Someone Google it. Let me know. DGZ. I believe that might be a red. You should be able to find somewhere on the internet what the DGZ stands for. But, there you go, all right? 
So I'm going to shut down my NAS, my mass storage. Uh, I'm going to show you me putting it in, stuff like that, and then switching it back on. Like I say, fingers crossed, 16 terabytes, it should just work. Mm. Right, so I shut down the NAS drive, this little baby here. This is the DS918 Plus, and I've had it for a couple of years now, and they're very good. Well pleased with it. I would like a bigger one though, you know, maybe a 12 bay one. So that might be my next one, get a 12 bay. There's a 12 bay one out there now, and there's a newer version, but it doesn't take any drive. It only takes certain drives. So I might not go down that route. I might actually go down a completely different route and you know, maybe even build one. <laughs> right, so I have in here, I think I have three 10 terabyte drives and one 12 terabyte drive, which I think is this one. I'm going to have a quick look. It's a little bit dusty at the moment, so I'm going to have to give it a clean as well. And that's a 10 terabyte. So that's probably the one we're going to use. And this one, I believe, right, 12 terabytes now. So I'm going to keep that one in now. Now, the way I've set up my RAID is should one drive fail, I will not lose any information. But should more than one drive fail, <laughs> I will lose everything. That's how I set it up. That's how I set it up anyway. So I'm going to take this off. So we're going to do away with this drive. I forgot how to do it. Oh yes, these little clips here and there. They're a little bit on the fiddly side. But they work extremely well for holding in the uh, drives. So I do like Western dish tools and I like using them. And you know, I do like this. But I prefer to put my own drives in, what I want in there. Not what they tell me I can put in there, but they're not going to guarantee, should you decide to get the newer versions or, or the bigger ones of these, they uh, are restricting on what drives you can put in. They're saying, look, we've tested these drives. These ones work fine. If you put any others in, we do not give you any guarantees. Fair enough. So is that in place? I'm not sure. Should be. Plonk this back on. Can remember how to do it. Like I say I ain't done this for a while. Come on. Is that in? Is that one? That's it. So that's in. And then all you do is put that back in. Don't forget, if you're going to be putting it in a PC, you must cover over them uh, connections. All right? Just the first three. I believe that's all you have to do. Plonk that back in now. Close her up. Job done. Right, before I put her back, I will give her a good clean out. Or a hoover. I know you shouldn't do it with a hoover, but it's the best way to do it. So that is it. That is all done. And that will probably take about, for it to reconfigure it and set it all up again, it'll probably take about a week. <laughs> Seriously. So with that, let's stick her back, shall we? I plugged it in and yes, everything is running fine. I plugged it into my storage and it's recognised it and it says, you should only be using recommended drives. Well, I can't afford a recommended drive. That is why I've gone down this route. I understand there is a risk that should you lose all the, should the drive go down, you will lose all the information. I understand that. That is the risk I am prepared to take. And fingers crossed, and touch wood, it may never happen. It took about a day, or just over a day, for it to transfer all the information onto the new drive, get the drive ready, transfer it all over, and had no issue with that whatsoever. And it took about another day after that for me to run something called data scrubbing, which basically goes through a load of checks just to make sure it's all right and everything's running okay which I thought was well worth doing for the first time. And yeah, no issues with it whatsoever. So now what I've got inside is one 10.9 terabyte hard drive, which is a 12 terabyte drive, right? If that makes sense. I have two running 9.1 terabyte drives, 
which is basically 10 terabytes of drive, and one, my new one, which is the 16 terabyte one, which is 14.6 terabytes. And yeah, it's saying they're all healthy, I have no issue with it whatsoever, it's running fine, and, and yeah, well happy. In the future, I want to try and get another three, but they're not cheap. <laughs> they cost a lot of money. So that is the future, the future plan, get another three, so they're all, they're all 16 terabyte drives, and that should be perfect for what I want them to do. And then in the future, maybe get a bigger NAS in the future. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick some links in the video description in case you want to go and check it out, in case you want to buy you know, one of these drives. Like I said, I bought it on Black Friday, so don't expect it to be £239. Unless you're buying it a long time in the future, it might be around that price by then. Fingers crossed. Or it might be Black Friday 220, 2022. Two, sorry, 2022. You know what I mean. <laughs> so with that, put the app back on. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, stay safe, look after yourself, and don't forget to join the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up as well. Thank you. Have a good one.